as promised, our very special guest joining us via Skype is David Humphrey from Kirkman Labs. There we are, David. Welcome to Autism Live. Hi, uh, thank you very much for having me here. We're thrilled to have you. I have said before on the show that Kirkman Labs, very trusted, perhaps the most trusted name in uh, the field of supplements and uh, things that you can use biomedically to help your child on the autism spectrum. But you have a wide variety of products that aren't just for autism. Um, and really remarkable, My, our family has used Kirkman. And I, first of all, have to start by saying that I'm a big fan and that I thank you so much for everything that you have done for the autism community. Well, uh, thank you. It, it has been the best years of my life uh, spent during the last 12 years taking over from my father who did this for 20 years. So, wow. Uh, I'm trying to help finish what he started. Well, it is an amazing journey that you are on. And uh, we had a couple of things that we specifically wanted to talk about today. And one of them in particular is, I was mentioning before I saw th this morning, I was looking at my Autism File magazine, and you have this lovely ad on the back of uh, an edition of the Autism File magazine about prenatal care. And I know when I spoke to you yesterday, you mentioned one of the reasons why you have been so particular about this is an association with Bernie Rimland. And for people who uh, are new to the autism world, who perhaps haven't heard that name, they really should know more about Bernie Rimland. Tell us a little bit about who Bernie Rimland was and what your connection with him was. Uh, Bernie is known as the father of the modern autism movement. In the 1950s, uh, when he had a son, uh, Mark that was diagnosed with autism, it was relatively unknown and thought to be cold mothers that were neglecting the child. Bernie basically changed that single-handedly. And, and then the second major way was uh, he was able to introduce the fact that these children have serious medical problems that need to be addressed. Yeah. And Bernie was the visionary, really, of this movement. Uh, and he was my mentor. I was his attorney for 10 years. and. So I uh, had a rare opportunity to really understand the way the great man thought, and he was absolutely parent advocacy all the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you had mentioned that, uh, of course, we lost Dr. Rimland uh, a couple of years ago, but before he died, you were able to have conversations with him about, because he was a visionary, and he shared with you his vision of where we needed to go with autism, and it has affected what you have been, how you've been spending your time, correct? Correct. I spend maybe 90% of my time with nonprofit foundations, and I've been on the board of most of the major ones. And what I try to do is I try to take the vision that he had at his death, and I was with him, and, and the main uh, vision that Bernie had is that autism can be prevented in the womb, and if not prevented in the womb, uh, can certainly be prevented by the age of one with micro gestures that occur with uh, one-year-olds that we can get a foretelling of the fact that we'll become autistic by two and a half. So the reason why Bernie was interested in this is that he felt that much of the genetic research was going to go the way of the Down syndrome community, which was genetic markers would be used for abortions. And that's exactly what's happened with Down syndrome is 94% of the babies are aborted before they're born. He thought that would be an unbelievable tragedy since these children, he felt, uh, if properly treated, could grow up to be wonderful uh, people within the community and, and loving children for the families. So this has really been my life's work is trying to establish those two areas. And I'm pleased to say that we've been able to really accomplish, I think, both. Okay, awesome. Let's start by talking about the prenatal care and things that you can do. I know I had considered having another child, and uh, that didn't work out for us because of my age, but so many parents are out there who have a child who's on the spectrum, and they're thinking about getting pregnant, but they're concerned, or they have a girlfriend who's pregnant and calling them up and saying, what can I be doing before pregnancy and during pregnancy to reduce my child's risk? What do you know, and what would you suggest to people who are asking? Asking those questions well what we did is is we went to those doctors that have been successful in treating autism medically and we interviewed extensively over a year uh, five doctors that had about a thousand live births David Berger out of Florida had 500 
where he practiced preconception and prenatal care by reducing toxicity in the womb, avoiding prescription drugs, avoiding toxic exposures, having mom take an unbelievable healthy diet, and then during the first two years of infancy, uh, keeping them away from those things that uh, would tend to interfere with a developing gastroimmune system. Here's remarkable uh, numbers. Out of David's 500 patients, he's yet to have one child with autism, even though the primary practice are high-risk parents. This is consistent with the other doctors. So we've brought together 20 of the top scientists and business people in the world to say, can we develop this into a population study? And we just recently uh, uh, have a approval of a major population study using these techniques with a thousand women that will become pregnant. We believe these techniques will not only lower the rate of autism, but also lower the rate of other childhood diseases that are affected by neurological problems in the womb. Science is supporting this more and more. This is a huge breakthrough. Uh, the second is uh, uh, that we believe that that it also will reduce the chance of preterm birth, which is 12% in this country, uh, and also miscarriages, which are amazingly 31% of all the pregnancies end in miscarriage. So we, we feel this has got full support of the scientific community that we've been contacting, and we've talked to CDC, and, and uh, they have full support. So we're, we're very excited to move ahead on it. Absolutely. I, it's very exciting. I want to go over those numbers again. So uh, out of 500 live births, and a lot of them were at risk or they were all at risk parents um, that already had a child with autism. Is that correct? Correct. And out of 500 live births, in using the, these techniques of making sure that they reduced the amount of toxins that they were exposed to and had a healthy diet uh, and making sure that they're, they had correct supplements, not one of those children has ended up having autism. Not one. Which is uh, statistically kind of amazing, correct? Well, it should be 17%. Uh, actually, Bernie, uh, back in 1990, uh, pointed me in the direction of a study called the Foresight Study, which took 367 women and men that were high risk and put them through a very similar protocol. It was published, uh, it was done by Carl Pfeiffer, a prominent scientist, and, and they found that out of the 367, they had 327 live births. The miscarriage rate went from uh, close to 20% down to zero, preterm went down to zero, and they had no examples of the 327 live births of any childhood disease. Wow. So we had some statistical information, and, and this actually, because it wasn't well understood, uh, we hadn't even done the smoking literature to indicate that toxins from smoke were affecting the baby. So what's happening is it's really at the same stage we were when folks were smoking cigarettes and thinking that wasn't affecting their lung cancer, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden everybody put it together. My, Guess says this is the biggest single development in maternal care. And if we look at the cost of maternal care in this country, it is a $50 billion price tag, of which $30 billion can be saved by using these uh, techniques. Wow. And I know the question that viewers are going to ask is, where can I find the protocol? Where can I find the step-by-step -step of what I have to do to be able to duplicate these results for myself? Well, uh, again, this is not being handled as a commercial project. Right. This is done through the nonprofit foundation. And, what, and we're the ones that did the uh, ATN medical protocols for autism, so we've had a long history of doing things well. Uh, the, uh, the protocol will be likely published around January. Uh, we're going to do CME courses for doctors. Uh, we're going to have handbooks for parents. It'll be a very detailed uh, protocol. Uh, and just to give, give you a quick hint, if somebody wants to do it right away, uh, it's avoid toxins from all sources, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. high levels of vitamin D, uh, between 40 and 60 nanograms, which is about 4,000 I use of vitamin D a day, uh, high levels of zinc, which are necessary for reproduction. Uh, the other novel part of this is we're developing uh, blood spot and urine spot tests that will be able to exactly measure how much pesticides, mm -hmm a woman has in her system and how many metals she has. Mm -hmm. So we can basically say you were in a safe range or you're in a risk range. Uh, and again, uh, just really quickly, John Hopkins just came out with a study that the higher the amount of pesticides, 
the more irregular and faster the heartbeat is a fetus. So we know this is one of thousands of studies that are providing support and correlation. They were affecting the, the child and were affecting the brain and it's resulting in a lot of these problems. Wow, amazing. And I would imagine that you've got a whole line of uh, nutritional uh, products here that were on this uh, Autism File magazine that are beneficial for this protocol as well. Well, one of the reasons why Kirkman's been selected, not just because I'm on the foundation, it's because we have a standard that any supplement has to be tested for pesticides and metals. And right now, Kirkman's 950 testing tests every single batch and every single product. We found that in other prenatal supplements that were tested by Duquesne University, some of them contain levels of mercury and uranium that are 100 times safe levels. Most of these were made in China. So it's the reason why Kirkman uh, has gone ahead and invested in the technology to guarantee each product meets the very strict Prop 65 standards in California. And again, the, the, the study was chosen because you can't give a woman prenatal supplements containing uranium and then measure her and find uranium and be happy about it. So uh, the, the, the product was chosen and we're supplying it without a profit to us, but it's, it's done uh, to make sure that everything is clean. Food is clean, water is clean, supplements are clean. It's absolutely essential. Trace amounts of contamination at the wrong time. The brain develops starting about the eighth week to the twelfth week. That's the major developmental time. Toxicity at that time can cause a lifetime of a problem. And actually some of these toxins can last for four generations in the mothers, according to recent research. Absolutely amazing what you're doing. And, and uh, all the more reason, if you're thinking about getting pregnant or you're getting pregnant, make sure that you're taking supplements that are safe. Make sure that you're using Kirkman Labs.